Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome to my Fallout 4 E3 analysis video. Everything that's got me pumped and excited, and I just got to talk to you guys about it because finally, we we not only know that the game is freaking coming out, but we've got information on it. And ah, uh, just like Obsidian before, Bethesda. Bethesda is taking a lot of pages from the modding community. Now, right now, I'm in a hotel room, so my audio quality probably isn't the best, and I do apologize for that, but I am down in LA right now. You can probably hear the cop sirens going by as we speak. But anyways, let's get into Fallout 4. So the first thing that I, I love is character creation. Now, the whole point of a Fallout game is to build your own character. Now, we've all had some uh, some concerns when the teaser came out. They showed this character that the voice very much matched the character. And because, yes, he's voiced now, interestingly enough. But the can we still customize the character? Can you have a female character, a female lead? These are the questions that a lot of people had. And we get this right away in the new Fallout. And I love the system, because in the other two Fallouts, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, uh, you would kind of have it built into the world, but then this menu would pop up, and then you have to go through about a million sliders to make a character. Now, we get this mirror in the bathroom of the main character's house, where we can just grab bits and pieces of his face and move them around as we like. They use a couple sliders to change the color, the pigmentation, and all that, and the detail is there. Gotta say, coming from New Vegas, and jumping into this one and seeing this one, and tomorrow I should actually have a chance to play Fallout 4, but uh, just seeing it, and the character model looks great, fantastic. Okay, I'm not gonna get too much into the voice work of the character, uh, I'm a little concerned. Fallout has always been, for me, a, a, I'm the voice of the protagonist, right? What I say and what the choices that I make are what the character says. It's never been Mass Effect style of, well, I, I want my character to kind of say this, and then you click an option and then your character says something that may or may not be along the lines of what you thought he was going to say. Fallout was always very specific about it. So I don't know about the whole voice part. I kind of wish it was an option to just turn off. Maybe it'll win me over though, maybe. Uh, so, just diving into the visuals, we're gonna get into the real basic stuff real quick. Visually, I think the game looks fantastic. Uh, I think it looks great. I mean, there's an attention to detail in the, uh, in the new upgraded creation engine they're calling it. It is the Skyrim engine with some major tweaks to it, but you can see the level of detail that they're putting into it. I mean, the Pip-Boy is a great example. If you want to talk about immersion and attention to detail, the Pip-Boy moves around. You can see your character flipping the switches, the dials, the buttons. The UI on it is pristine. It looks Oh, amazing! You can flip through, you can actually load in audio tapes instead of just going to like the data part and then playing the audio blip. You actually see your character pick up the tape and stick it into your Pip-Boy. You can play games on it for God's sakes. And now, tell me, tell me the mod authors are gonna add more games to it as you play. Maybe even like a collector's thing. It's probably what it is actually. You're collecting all those tapes so you can play all the games whenever you want as you, uh, as you run around. And by games, I mean like they show a missile command game at one point. Um, what was it called? I think it was like Radiation Command or something like that. But talking about the visuals, Fallout 3 had it just right for me. It was an interesting world space. It had things that I wanted to poke around in. I wanted to look inside that crashed aircraft. I wanted to look inside that that uh, that vehicle or that, that building full of all kinds of boxes and go through all the boxes and find all the bottle caps. I mean, there were bits around the waist in the distance that I just, I looked out and I said, man, I've got a lot to explore because the world looks so massive. The world space looks great. New Vegas seemed very empty to me. And I think they, they nailed it with this one in Boston. I mean, just look at it. They got the highways in the background where they show the death cloth, the one part. They show the, the 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 suburbia area. I can't wait to pick through and find all the you know the resources that I need for the new house building system, which we'll talk about in a little bit later. Uh, I just, it, it looks good. It looks very good. The world space looks great. If you're complaining about the graphics, then obviously gameplay should trump graphics and you need to get yourself looked at because you're crazy. Moving on, moving on to the the modded weapons and armor. So crafting system, there was a mod that brought a crafting system, a real crafting system into Fallout 3. Eventually, Fallout New Vegas came out, Obsidian said, we're gonna take the best mods for Fallout 3 and we're gonna incorporate them into our game. Fallout New Vegas had a pretty decent crafting system and even more mods came out to make it even a little bit more robust. All right. 
best mods right now for Fallout New Vegas don't compare to what Fallout 3 has shown us, so, or Fallout 4 has shown us so far. I mean, we've got modded weapons and armor to the point where you can custom build the weapon you want. You want a laser rifle SMG? You want a heavy machine gun laser rifle? You want to make your laser rifle a sniper rifle? You want to make a sawed-off shotgun? You can do that, and they have a nice section in the video footage that they've shown so far going through all the options that you can choose to customize your weapon. But they also mentioned, and they only showed a little bit of it, layered armor and sections of armor. Now in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, you, you've always, you, all the Fallouts actually, you had full sets of armor, right? You, you switch to leather armor and you'd have leather armor. You switch to combat armor and it would be your entire suit would change. Well, now you can customize the armor. Now, what does this mean? What kind of level of detail will we get? Well, they do show a shot of characters switching their look up and it is, well, it's a substantial change for the character on how they look. I mean, from their helmet to their, their crazy nighty dress that the dude is wearing, up to like a tuxedo, to the classic armored uh, armored vault suit. You know, it, it uh, the custom, the customization in this is really where they've taken it above and beyond, I think. But all right, let's, let's continue down the list of awesome that is the Fallout 4 reveal. So we're gonna get into combat. Now combat, I'm gonna just quickly say, if, if you really watch it, it looks smooth. Character animations, character movement. Well, the main character still seems a little stiff, but the, I mean the enemies that you're seeing, even like the rats, the way the weapons are handled, the way the, the gun kicks back on, uh, I think that wasn't the 10 millimeter, but the way the guns kick, the way everything is animated, it looks great. Combat looks a lot smoother, and I'm hoping that the bugs that are in the combat system for Fallout 3 in New Vegas, especially when you're using VATS, where like you'll get caught shooting a wall instead of your target, um, are, are finally are finally done with and fixed. Because it does look smooth. Even VATS, when he goes into VATS, it goes into like slow-mo, it doesn't pause time. And it, I don't know, it, it seemed like, wow, that's a really cool concept. The world looks so good to see it like in slow-mo when a death claw is rushing down on you and you can go into VATS and slow him down and you're praying that that headshot is gonna land and you'll get a critical and you'll kill him, you know? That, I'm, I'm really excited about the combat. Now, speaking of combat, they revealed the power armor changes. Now, I, 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 in my wildest dreams, couldn't have asked between this and the uh, and the building of your own base are the two additions that just blew me away. Power armor. Now, if you if you don't know, Fallout power armor is supposed to be kind of Iron Man esque, right? It is supposed to be something that you drive, something that you have to be trained in how to operate. It's not just big bulky armor that is supposed to bring up your DT, you know, your damage threshold. Threshold. It's supposed to be something that you jump in, it's heavy, it's metal, and if without the right training, you'll kill yourself in it, okay? That's what they finally brought into the world of Fallout with this. It's not just a perk and you throw on some new armor, it is a real thing that you drive. Now, I'm not sure how that's gonna work exactly. Do we have to call it in? Does it run on a certain type of fuel? Uh, there is a great mod, it's called, I think, Power Armor Something for New Vegas, where you actually had to fuel your power armor, and it gave it that sense of actually driving your power armor. It talked. It made this, like, clunking noise when you walked, and you could hear the servos going. And I really like the resource management of that. You had to power the thing. That means you had to have power cells. Uh, but it also gave you lots of benefits, and that was the cost. Um, that, that kind of weighing out you have to do in Fallout. Do you want to waste those resources? Maybe you've got to pick up those resources, like the power cells I was talking about in Fallout 4, and fuel this thing. Maybe you have to have it hot dropped into you. They did show vertebrates, the ability to call in vertebrates in the trailer, which again, another Fallout 3 mod, Fallout New Vegas mod, where you could call in vertebrates to do airstrikes. You could call them in to drop off troops. This is a mod I was talking about, but now it, look at this, it's in Fallout 4. Power armor mod, also Fallout 4. Speaking of best mods, that they've added into Fallout 4. <sighs> Building your own base. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, wow, that's a great idea, Bethesda's a genius. Well, building your own base in Fallout actually has a long history from Fallout 3 in New Vegas. There is the real-time settlers mod, which is literally exactly what they've added into Fallout 4. You build a base, you have to deal with how many people you have, how much food your place has, how much water, how much power, how many beds to keep all those people, you know, happy. Well, that's all now in Fallout 4. It is literally real-time real strategy 
Real-time settler, excuse me, real-time settler, the mod, built directly into Fallout 4. This is something that I wanted so bad, because it's such a good mod, and it had a habit of bugging out your game because it was so big, it was so scripted. Another mod just like this, Wasteland Defense. You buy bits and pieces from a vendor, and you can build up your, your base. Best part is, too, you get the resources to build your base from the wasteland, meaning there's a whole new reason to use all that loot and gear and crap that you'll find out there. Speaking of looting all that stuff, another mod that they had in Fallout New Vegas that I loved uh, was any mod that made it so the crap that was lying around the wasteland, like frying pans and uh, uh, lawnmower blades and crap like that, they weren't just used to make, you know, random weapons or the junk launcher. No, these can be used to build all your mods. So if you want to build a scope, their example was, if you, you need a piece that has glass, you need a piece that has some metal, and then you had, it was some other item. Yeah, you can use the junk. It's such a good idea, good concept. And I'm really glad that they're, I, and I wish they would just straight up say it, we're looking into the modding community and we're taking the best ideas and we're incorporating them into our new game. Because that would really, that would be worth it. Because honestly, their biggest reveals have been mods for five years to, almost a decade now for Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3. So, ah, I'm, I'm incredibly excited. The only issues that I have so far with the game, and we'll see when I get some hands-on time with it, would be the voice protagonist, really. I mean, I think that's my only one thing that's kind of like, hmm, I wouldn't have done that. But even, it's not, I'm not making the game, it's their artistic right to do whatever they want with it, but, ah, I don't know. I hope it's an option, I really do. I really do. All right, guys. Well, that is my look at Fallout 4. Now, expect more videos coming out on this. I did get to see today EA show. I get to see the uh, the Battlefront trailer, gameplay trailer live. Um, very. A lot of people were very excited by it. I'm. I'm on the fence because honestly, it didn't relieve any of the issues that I originally had from the gameplay that I've already seen. So, but we'll get into that later. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.